Happy Saturday, everybody. You know, I have uh, been told that it's important for me to be consistent. The Lord said to me, <sighs> be more consistent. So I'm putting forth a great effort to be more consistent because consistent, consistency, I should say, is the breeding ground for discipline. And discipline is the breeding ground for success. Okay. So I want to thank you for um, tuning in. Thank you for watching the video. If you're uh, new to the channel, God bless you. Thank you. And even if you're not new to the channel, God bless you and thank you. And um, the topic that I'm covering is probably somewhat sensitive. Um, and it's based upon a conversation, a, a very um, private conversation that I had uh, with someone who's very close to me where they were sharing with me um, that they had been having um, some suicidal thoughts. And so that is one of the reasons why I was prompted uh, to do this teaching. Because I don't want anyone to ever think that being a Christian means that they are exempt from weariness, depression, and just overall negative, poor thinking. Um, you can be a Christian and be depressed. And so we're going to be talking about uh, weariness because that's usually what Christians, that's what Christians refer to as uh, depression is weariness. That's another way of saying weariness. In the world, it's called depression or suicidal thoughts. In the kingdom, that's weariness. Let's go. So the scripture that we're going to be using for reference today is Galatians 6 and 9, uh, where it talks about you don't grow weary in well-doing. You'll reap in due season if you faint not. That fainting actually is tied to giving up. That's just another way of saying if you don't give up and you continue to press in and you continue to believe God, you'll get to the destination that he wants to take you to. The other scripture that we're going to use is Proverbs 4 and 23, where it talks about guarding your hearts because out of it are the issues of life. That word hearts in that particular scripture is referring to your mind. You have to guard your mind. The mind is oftentimes referred to as the devil's playground. And I know that to be true. So before we even get into this teaching, before we get into this discussion, let's go into prayer. Father, thank you for giving me this opportunity to come and to express your heart to the people that are going to hear it. And now I ask you in Jesus' name that you will bless them. Bless them if they are weary, Father God. Give them the strength, give them the understanding, give them the wherewithal to know that they can continue to press and they can continue to lean on you and they can continue to seek you and believe you for whatever you've promised them. And even if there's no promises that they are uh, holding fast to, whatever is going on in their lives, I just pray that your mercies, that your goodness and that your grace will be their portion and that they will continuously grow in wisdom to your will and what it is that you are doing through them and for them in your name and for your name's sake. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now, let's talk about weariness. As I said in the beginning of the video, in the body of Christ, we don't refer to uh, depression as depression. We actually call that weariness. In the Bible, that would be weariness. The Bible tells us that if we grow weary in well-doing and if we faint, that we won't be able to reap in due season. But if we are able to continue steadfastly, we'll reap in due season. The due season refers to a time allotted by God for something to happen. One of the most difficult things that Christians face is waiting for God. Let me say that again. One of the most difficult things that Christians tend to face is being able to wait 
for God. It seems like if there's anything <laughs> that's going to test you, if there's anything that's going to prove you, it's going to be that waiting process. You know, it's not an easy thing to wait for God. And this person that I was speaking to today, they've been waiting for God. They've been waiting for something to take place in their lives now. And it's been over a year. Now, some of you who hear me saying that, you're probably going to wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So they've been waiting for God for a year. I've been waiting for 10 years. <laughs> I've been waiting for, 20, yes, a year. This person has been waiting for God to move on their behalf. But let me just say this. God graces us for those waits. It doesn't always seem like he graces us for those waits. Sometimes it can seem like he's never going to come. He's never going to answer. And of course, when that happens, the enemy will get in your ear and he'll start telling you he ain't going to come. He ain't coming. Don't you see how long you've been waiting? You've been waiting now for a whole two months. You've been waiting now for a whole year and you still waiting on him. Don't you know he ain't coming? He ain't coming. That's what the enemy wants you to think. The enemy wants you to start feeling sorry for yourself. And that's one of the things that I was delivered from. Is pity parties, feeling sorry for myself. You know, I want you to be delivered from that too. God, Father God, in the name of Jesus, deliver your children from pity parties. Deliver your children from feeling sorry for themselves when things are not going the way they want them to. That's what happens to us when we start having suicidal thoughts, weariness, excuse me, suicidal thoughts, weariness is what we call it in the body of Christ. Suicidal thoughts is what they call it in the world. Pity parties, thinking that God isn't going to come through for you. I, and listen, I get it. I, I, I do. I understand. You know, nobody likes to wait. And sometimes our waiting, is it can be very difficult. So, you know, we just say waiting like it's just, you know, an easy, simple thing. Like you just go to the doctor's office and sit in a corner in a chair and read a magazine until you get called. But waiting on God is not like that. Waiting on God is not that simple. Because if you're waiting on God, you're probably going through something. You, you're being tested. So it's, it's, it's almost like going through a battlefield. It's probably, it's like... You know, I'm not telling you I think this. I'm telling you that I know. It seems like once you get over one hurdle, next thing you know, there's another one you got to get over. You know, so waiting for God is not easy. I get it. But this is one thing that I know. He hasn't left you. He has not left you. Is it normal to be a Christian? And have suicidal thoughts? Yes. You heard me right. Yes. It is normal that you could be a Christian. You could be a believer. You could be a child of God. And think that your life is meaningless. And think that your life is hopeless. It's a very possible thing. It has happened to me. Yes. It has happened to me more than one time. I can tell you that I thought to myself, this life for my life is just not worth it. This doesn't look anything like what God told me. I did not sign up for this. M many times I have thought this. Many times I've thought that. Many times I've had that level of weariness where I thought, you know what? I, I don't know why I'm even here. What's the purpose? If I just if I'm just gonna keep suffering, if I'm just gonna keep going through all these things. But you know, there is a verse in Lamentations chapter three that says, It is of the Lord's mercies that we're not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They're new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. And I try to remember that verse. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be weary. That is another verse that I like to remember as well. That's John 14 and 27. So it's important for us to have the word in us. You know, 
if we do what God expects from us, it doesn't mean that we won't be weary. It doesn't mean we'll never go through anything. It doesn't mean that these tests and these processes will get easier. No, it means that if we learn to do what God would have us to do, and that is to seek his face, that is to pray, that is to get into the word, it makes the burden lighter. It doesn't mean the burden goes away. It means that we have the wisdom by the way of the word of God to know how to deal with these things. And we have the promise of God that he will never leave us, never forsake us. So we're able to navigate and we're, we're able to get through these things as sons, as daughters, as children of God, as saved people. No one has been promised that being a Christian is going to be easy. You're going to be tested. You're going to go through things, but you're also going to have great victories. I've had great victories in my life. And I could not imagine my life outside of being a daughter of the Most High God. I couldn't imagine. Many times I think to myself, you know, because sometimes we think that being a Christian is so difficult. What, what, what's the difference? I'll tell you the difference. When you're not a Christian, when you're not saved, when you're not a believer, and you're going through these very, very, very tough times, you are literally going through it alone. But as a, as a child of God, as a daughter, as a son, you're never going through anything by yourself. And whatever God allows you to go through, he's graced you for. You, know, you can't say that if you're, if you're not a child of God. I'm sorry. Uh, if you're not a child of God, you cannot say that. Only the child of God can say, I'm going through this. God is with me. That's his promise to never leave us and never to forsake us. That promise is only to saved people. It is only to the sons and daughters of God. That is not to unsaved people. But if you are a saved person, if you are a born again believer, if your life belongs to Christ, that is his promise to you that he will never leave you and that he'll never forsake you. So you're never alone. You're never alone. You may, you may feel like you are sometimes because the pressures of life, they're compounded. But I tell you right now, I, I tell you right now, I don't care what I've gone through. I don't care what I'm going through. The one thing that helps me to get through is knowing that God is for me. That he won't leave me. That he won't forsake me. If I was not saved, if I didn't belong to him, I wouldn't have that assurance. I wouldn't have that assurance. God is faithful. God is faithful. And I, and I want to say this because I, I've, I've talked about how if you're not saved, you don't have that assurance. But if you are saved, you do have that assurance that God is always for you. He'll never leave you, never forsake you. But the Bible does tell us that the sun raises on the just and on the unjust. And we all know when it rains, it rains on the saved and on the unsaved. So there is still even mercy for unsaved people. There's a mercy there because God said he'll be merciful to whom he will be merciful. So even unsaved people, God can be merciful. And we know God is merciful. We, we all got to unsave those of us who are saved. You know people that are not saved. You know people that are not saved. So we know that God is merciful because we all know somebody who's not saved and there's something they've been able to overcome. Even though you're wondering like how only God could have done it to help them out with that. So God is merciful, okay, to everybody. But don't get it twisted. His loyalty, okay, is to his children. I want you to think of it this way. If you go to a playground and there's somebody at the playground 
that shouldn't be there. Maybe there's a predator at the play- playground. So you got you got word there's a predator at the playground. Right. So you went out there to get your kids out of the, the you, you went over to get your kids off the playground because there's a predator going around. Okay. And they're, they're there. They're somewhere around in the vicinity. So you're like, okay, I'm going to go get my kids. If your neighbor's child is there playing with your kids, you're going to bring the neighbor's child too. But your priority is going to be to what? To whom? Your children. That's who you, that's where your priority is going to lie. Okay. So God is no different. God will be merciful on who he chooses to be merciful, but his loyalty lies with those who belong to him, those who have laid down the, those who have surrendered to him, those who say, God, without you, I'm nothing. I need you. I need you to be in my life. Those who have surrendered their life over to him, those who are saved. Okay, that's how that works. Galatians 6 and 9, it talks about that if we don't grow weary, we'll reap in due season. The weariness is depression. And it's very easy to grow weary if you have enough going on. So I'm not going to, I'm not here to tell you that you're never going to grow weary. I'm not here to, you know, I'm not here to insult you or to make you feel like that's beneath you because you belong to God. So you, how dare you be? No, no, no. I'm not here to do that. I'm not here to make you feel bad because you're a Christian and, and you have days or moments or even lengths of time where you feel weary. No, I'm here to tell you that I understand. But what you must do is you must begin to get into the word of God so that you can get that word engrafted in you so that when you need something to go back to, you can pull that word. You can remember that word because that word is a truth. You have this understanding. The Bible says that those who draw close to God, he will draw close to you. That if you're drawing close to him, he will draw close to you. Start seeking his face. And when you really feel like you just can't take it anymore, that's when you need to come boldly to the throne of grace. And you need to come in there. You need to tell him exactly how you feel. Don't mince words. You can mince words with many people. But when it comes down to the father, don't mince words with him. Tell him how you feel about your circumstance. And you might say, oh, but no, that's God. That's why you should be telling him. Because even before you opened up your mouth, he already knew what was on your heart. But there's something about you opening up your mouth and literally telling him that makes all the difference. No, God is God, so he does know everything. But that doesn't mean that because he knows everything, he doesn't want us to sit and talk to him. That he doesn't want us to be honest about what's going on with us and what we're feeling, to express it from our own mouth. You know, it's one thing for me to look at you and be able to discern something. It's another thing for you to open up your mouth and literally tell me what you're feeling. There's a difference. And so God is no different. It's important for you to have relationship with him. That doesn't mean you never get weary. That doesn't mean you don't get tired. It just means that you have the love of the father and you need to know how to tap into that. And that's what helps me. I'm not telling you anything that I don't do myself. If you knew some of the things I'm going through right now, you'd be stunned. And I believe that before the end of this year, in fact, excuse me, before before the end of summer, I will be on here and I'm going to be telling you what God has brought me out of and you're going to be you're you're going to be stunned when I tell you. Because if you look at me right now, you would know what type of fire I'm going through. But I've been through some stuff, okay? But this is this is just not the time for me to you know, you can't testify until you get to the other side. <laughs> okay. You don't testify when you're going through the test. You testify on the other side. Okay. So I will be back and I will be telling you about some things that the Lord has done. So nobody can tell me that God isn't good. I know that God is good. I know that God is faithful. And I know that whatever 
you're going through, he's going to bring you out if you allow him to. That's why Galatians 6 and 9 says, you will reap in due season if you what? Faint not. So the goal is to stay steadfast, unshakable, and unmovable, and don't faint. That's actually the easiest thing to do, is to just faint. Keep pressing, keep going, keep growing in the knowledge and understanding in relationship with the Father. You know that's so important to Him? Do you know that's the heart of God for each uh, child of God is to grow in relationship with you? Do you know that Jesus dying on the cross had to do with the reconciliation of the sons and daughters to the Father? Jesus didn't just die on the cross just so that our sins could be forgiven. Yes, that's part of it. But God wanted to reconcile us back to him. So relationship is so very important. And if you are in a place of weariness, if you feel like you can't take it no more, if you feel like you just be better off just being dead, you need to seek the face of the Father. You need to go boldly to the throne of grace so you can find the help you need in that time of trouble. And you're going to find it. If you look for him, you're going to find it. I can tell you that. And if, you, if you're if you in an extremely low place, he'll come looking for you. Because God is merciful. And God is gracious. A very present help in times of trouble and if you're weary then that's a troubling place that's a troubled place in your life so you have to believe you have to know that no matter how it feels no matter how it looks God is for you and not against you and he has good plans for you right the Bible says he has plans to help us and not to harm us to give us a hope and a future and a what? Expected end. So if you're expecting God to bring you out, he's, he, he's desiring to do it the more. But God has to allow us to go through these processes and God has to allow us to go through these tests. Because we have to know how to endure hardness as a, good, as a soldier, a good soldier. This life was never promised to just be a walk in the park. Yes, you have those walk in the park moments. I'm not saying that every day has to, all of your life, you just expect, oh, I'm just going to be suffering all the time and never have. No, but you are going to have times when you're going to have to be tested and you're going to have to go through things. But if you're wise, if you're wise, you will hold on to his unchanging hand. You will seek his holy face and he'll always be found because he's always near. He's always near. And always wanting you to want him. Always wanting you to seek him. That's the love of the Father. And that's the heart of the Father for you. So I'm telling you today. You're going to go through some rough patches as a Christian. Don't let anybody tell you that being a Christian is a walk in the park. If somebody tells you that being a Christian is a walk in the park. I'm going to tell you what type of Christian that is. They probably got saved two weeks ago. God requires maturity. You got to grow up sometimes. You're not going to stay a babe forever. <laughs> You're going to have to grow up. Christianity is just like some other parts and things in life where, you know, you there are levels and you've got to grow. You're not going to stay a baby. You didn't stay a baby in the physical, in the natural. So what makes you think as a Christian you're going to stay in that baby baby level on that baby level it's just not going to happen and I'll tell you something else you don't want that to happen because there are experiences there are there are blessings there are things that you will not attain if you stay immature as a Christian so that process that you're going through those tests that you're going through that just seem so difficult they're to help you they're to help you to grow in relationship with the Lord and even in your life, it's they're going to help you because you're going to be able to testify. If you faint not, <laughs> you're going to be able to testify of how God brought you out of this bad situation and now how your life is so much better. Being weary. Mm. 
That's something that happens to us as Christians. We go through it sometimes. Sometimes we feel like this life is just not any, it's just not worth living. You can get to that place. You just get tired. You get tired even, this is for the mature Christians. You get tired of hearing people say, you know, I see God is going to do this for you. Do you know there's a, there's a verse in the Bible that says for us not to despise prophecy and prophesying? Because you, you probably, if you've heard that, you're probably like, well, why would I despise that? Because you can get to a point where you'll start to hear the same words over and over again. Or you'll keep hearing something along the lines of what you've already been told. Maybe it has to do with your finances and you just keep hearing these same prophetic words and none of them have come to pass. After a while, that can get, that can get on your nerves. <laughs> get on your nerves but because God is a, a he likes to confirm and he'll keep telling you over and over again he will send people to keep telling and when God does that that's his way of saying to you don't count me out I said it I'm gonna do it but we get tired of hearing it I just thought I would throw that in there because if you are <clears throat> if you are a prophetic person or if you are a person who knows someone who's prophetic or you follow prophetic ministries you've probably heard something more than once and you, you could get tired of hearing that you get you, tired of that actually is what I'm saying you grow weary by receiving words somebody said that to me somebody prophesied that over me one day she said you are full of words that means that I've been told something the, the Lord has sent me a lot of prophetic words I'm a, I'm a prophetic person but just because you are called to the prophetic doesn't mean you don't receive prophetic words sometimes prophetic people receive them more than people who are not so yeah so I said all of that to say guard your heart according to Proverbs 4 and 23 says to guard your heart out of it are the issues of life that heart that word heart in Proverbs 4 and 23 is referring to your mind you've got to guard it once again brothers and sisters the only way you're going to be able to do that is by drawing closer to the Lord staying in the word staying in worship and I, I want to admonish you this is what I heard someone say to me some a few some weeks ago uh, if you because you can't always get in the word sometimes if, if you're really going through you may not be able to sit and study the word if you find that you're in that place turn your worship music on start listening to some worship music go into worship when your mind is just you're not able to get into the word go into worship God loves when a, for us to worship him, right? That's what we're here to do. We're here to worship, right? We were created to worship him. So there's not, there's not going to be a time when he says, no, nah, don't worship me. <laughs> okay? So I hope that you're encouraged. I hope that you're encouraged in your situation to believe God no matter what. Not allow the issues of this life to bring you down to the point where you feel like you cannot get back up because I'm here to tell you that's a lie out of the pit of hell. You can get back up. God is faithful. He knew you when he created you, when he made you to be. What he starts, he finishes. Whatever you're going through, that's all you're doing is going through it. You're not going to stop and not go through. You're just going to go right on through this too shall pass okay it is of the Lord's mercies we are not consumed because his compassions fail not they are new every morning great is thy faithfulness that's in Lamentations chapter 3 and I hope that you will get acquainted with that because that verse has helped me tremendously throughout the years So don't grow weary in well-doing. You will reap. I'm going to speak that over you. You will reap because you will not faint. In Jesus' name. God bless you.